So RDA stands for Robotic Desktop Automation. Um, in reality, it's just it's an acronym that falls under this process automation umbrella. Now, the most commonly referred to term is RPA, a robotic process automation. But all of these fall under this process automation umbrella. So RPA was originally intended to focus on back office processes, so things that can be automated without a lot of human intervention. Whereas RDA is on the other side of the coin. What they're really trying to do, and this is why you'll hear the term virtual assistants or desktop agents being utilized, is because there are actually robots that are stored locally on the user's machine. So instead of being on a cloud or some VM or server where it's running on the back end, this is something that's stored locally on the machine. And the reasoning why is just as it acts like an assistant is that it, for commonly used tasks, it is able to grab those whilst being located on your local PC and be able to increase your capacity. So that's why you often hear the term assistant or virtual agent or virtual assistant being utilized when referring to RDA. So one of the main use cases, and still to this day, one of the most tried and, and true methods is going to be call center automations. That's going to be one of the main focuses of RDA. And again, it all goes back to what is the purpose of, of robotic desktop automation versus RPA. And again, it's stored locally on your machine because it's meant in order to, to do tasks that are required for your overall function. Uh, but it's something that is able to, to work in tandem as you work. So it's not something that is mutually exclusive. Now, in terms of where those use cases are going, it is still going to be a customer support function. It's going to be one of the main use cases. But as the concept of citizen development grows, you're going to see more and more desktop automations uh, being utilized beyond just these customer support functions. Because it's it's all about the, the, the savings or the capacity increase when we're talking about ROI. And if I'm able to automate or address, say, 30 minutes worth of work a day, now that may not be a mu much from an a enterprise level. 30 minutes to one person may not be something very, very substantial. But if you're looking at it from one person's perspective, 30 minutes, if you're talking about an eight hour day, that's, you know, that could be over 20% or 15% of your entire day. Now, if you expand that across hundreds of resources by automating small tasks that are necessary in order for your function to operate, you are, you're going to start to be able to see how that compounding savings is going to be, um, is going to be shifted up to the enterprise. So we're going to start to see that over these next couple of years that the concept of citizen development, the concept of, of robotic desktop automation is going to expand in scope uh, as people are starting to identify use cases that are just beyond uh, call center or customer support functions. So it's very important, again, everybody's COE will be different. Uh, whether you have a centralized, a divisional, or a federated model, whether you have a dedicated COE for transformation or automation or you don't, you need to make sure you understand you know, what the lay of the land is before you really start moving forward with your RDA program. But once you have that established, uh, you're going to hear the concept of citizen-led development be brought up very early on. And the reason why is in order for RDA to really scale and again, get those enterprise savings, you have to make sure that it's something that is going to be able to be utilized by everyone across your organization. So you can start off in one function, let's say accounts receivable, and you need to move on to human resources and scale up accordingly. Uh, but the concept of citizen-led development is where instead of having dedicated resources like a business analyst or a developer only focused on creating these automations, which is very common in RPA implementations, one of the fundamental concepts of RDA programs is citizen-led development, meaning that they are not dedicated resources to just that program. What they are are resources that are dedicated to business programs or business functions that they identify these opportunities, that they're able to create these automations while still focusing on their actual business responsibilities. And that's where we're going to be able to scale is because if you're if you're going to give everybody the, it's just the same concept of uh, do you teach somebody to fish or do you give them a fish? By citizen-led development, you're teaching them how to be able to identify, to extract requirements and create automations that are going to be able to help them. Now, they're going to know what they are doing way better than any dedicated resource will. So why it's so powerful is similar to that concept I was saying before. If I'm able to save, say, 20 or 30 minutes of my day, if I'm able to expand that across 300 people, now again, they may be in different ways, different tasks and different functions. But if they're all able to save 30 minutes or an hour each, you're able to see how much savings you're able to get when you compound over an enterprise. And that's really where the difference is gonna be between RPA and RDA, 
is that you're going to be able to get those enterprise savings, uh, but the people that are actually going to be enabling it are going to be your business resources, not dedicated resources to your overall program. So the number of users that you really need to, to establish an RDA program is going to vary. Again, depending on the COE and your structure, your requirements are, are, are going to be different. However, a good rule of thumb is you want to approach it in, in iterations. Uh, so the way we like to do it is that we set them up in a series of pods um, or, or sprints, if you will, where we have five users per each pod. And we try to do two at a time in two iterations per month. So what our real goal is, because uh, again, it's all about expanding. So let's go under the example that we're in a divisional model where I just start off in, let's say, my finance department. Uh, that's where we're going to be, however many users I have in my finance department, I want to make sure that that is my initial scope for my program. So let's say I have 100 users. My goal should be is to have, let's say, 80 or 90% of those users trained and on this within six months. So really, if you have an established RDA program and it's something where you have a sound methodology, you have a sound, uh, sound foundation, you should be able to scale up in terms of amount of users that you can be, uh, that are able to be trained and implemented on RDA. You should be around the 250 to 500 range after one year. Again, it will vary depending on your COE, depending on your capability. Uh, but that is the number that we actually shoot for here at Accelerate. And with our program, our RDA 365, we actually uh, center around that 500 mark in order for us to, to say we've successfully established an RDA program or a citizen-led development program. We are going to talk about a business case scenario for one of our large financial service clients um, who are key players as 401k providers. The financial client has four call center locations. So there are over 400 customer service associates working across these call center locations. So the customer service associate receives calls from the customers either in the form of an inquiry or a transaction. The customer service associates receive around 3.9 million calls per year, out of which 30% of the calls are specific to the money out process. So which is around 940,000 calls are specific to the money out process. And the average call handling time for these money out process is around 7 minutes 30 seconds to 11 minutes 40 seconds. So we have taken up the money out process as our call center attended automation implementation and we have implemented this for these call centers. Our major goal here was to eliminate the repetitive calls from the customers to the call centers and also increase the information accuracy and also reduce the call handling times. Here we have the prior state and the current state of the call center automation for the money out process. In the prior state, uh, when the customer calls the call center, the customer service associate actually authenticates the customer, validates the customer details like the DOB, SSN, gathers all the information related to the loan, also verifies the loan plan details. At this point, the customer is actually put on a hold for an average of two to eight minutes and then at this point, the customer service associate is actually working with multiple screens. There are varied multiple screens like web applications, cloud-based systems, and also uh, mainframe applications and Excel workbooks that the customer service ha associate has to look into and also perform calculations based on the request. After the customer service associate is done with his calculations, the communi he communicates back to the customer about all the details and then the customer would then decide whether he would want to proceed further or not. So here in the current state scenario, when the customer calls the customer uh, uh, call center, the customer service associate authenticates the customer and then while the customer service associate is actually engaging and talking with the client, our digital assistant bot runs the background applications like mainframe application, Excel workbooks and also multiple screens and then provides us with a comprehensive dashboard which the customer service associate then finally views it and passes on the information to the customer. So here we have the money out bot which is in 
installed on the customer service desktops and the customer service uh, associate actually kick starts the digital assistant from his machine as soon as the bot is kick started first it validates and authenticates the customer on one of the screen pulls up all the information in terms of the balances uh, vested balances how much of loan has been applicable from one of the screens once it pulls all the information from based on the customer it would then pull all the details regarding to the plan of the customer so once those details are pulled up we would actually have a final output which is a beautiful comprehensive dashboard of information containing all the details related to the customer in terms of the personal details and the loan availability the outstanding loan that he has the vested balances or the loan amount that they can avail so this is the da- dashboard we have finally for the customer uh, service associate to communicate to back to the customer with higher efficiency and a higher um, accuracy in terms of the information so talking about how we actually trained uh, uh, the bots we had a hypercare phase uh, where we actually used to travel to the uh, different call center locations um, actually sit with the customer service associates work with them uh, get their feedback and also try to understand like what sort of calls they used to get and then we used to come back and actually regroup on those uh, feedback and um, collate all the information together and if there is any need that we need to uh, make any changes we would refine the code and uh, after we complete that we would again deploy back the uh, code back to the production so we monitored this over a period of our hypercare uh, in the in 30 days that has helped us in further optimization and a better accuracy uh, of the bot i would say the main takeaway here is a uh, mo- implement an implementation is very important but at the same time understanding the users perspective training them being with them understanding their process and not affecting them at all in terms of their day to day work i think that's something we have uh, we have learned uh with the process because it's 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 a completely a process where you don't only don't not only implement it but also have to understand in terms of the the uh, associate themselves uh, only then we would be able to provide a better roi or a, a better ftv savings i think that's uh, something that we have learned and we would take it forward for all our attended automation implementations